Hello ESL learners, welcome to this video. In today's video, I am going to cover perfect tenses, but only the simple perfect tenses because you know there is um there are simple tenses, continuous tenses, and well, we need to cover them in another video. But well, today we're just going to cover, we're going to work on simple tenses. Yes. Okay, so the first one we have on the board is the present perfect simple, which is subject, like I, have or has. Here we have subject, I, have, past participle, verb, taught, Complement English for 11 years, which could be an object and complement, right? English could be the object, okay? But well, so we have subject, have, past, participle, and complement. Now, this is not a math lesson, but well, I, I want to do it this way so that you can check out how to write it correctly, what order everything goes in. Okay, so the next example says, he has learned a lot in this class. He has learned a lot in this class. All right, so this verb right here, learned, could also be spelled like this, or written like this. Learned, but that is British English, yes? In American English, learn is an, a regular verb, not an irregular verb. So this is how I write it, learned, yes. He has learned a lot in class. All right. So he, subject, has, past participle verb, and complement again. Okay, so when do we use it? When do we use present perfect simple? Well, we use it when we want to talk about something that we did and we still do today. I have taught English for 11 years. I started teaching 11 years ago and I still teach today. Yes, so the present perfect simple is something that you started to do in the past and you still do today. Yes, okay, so present perfect simple, still, something you still do today. Yes, okay, next one is past perfect simple. The past perfect simple is subject, had, past participle verb, and complement. Okay, so subject, I had, past participle verb, taught, complement, English for 11 years. Okay, he had learned a lot. Okay, so those are the parts. Now, what is the difference between the present perfect simple and the past perfect simple? Well, this one you still do it. I have taught English for 11 years and I still do it today. But if I say, I had taught English for 11 years, that means I don't, I don't do it anymore. Like, uh, you know, I had taught English for 11 years, but I don't do it anymore. I don't do it anymore, all right? So, don't anymore. Or simply not anymore. <laughs> I think that sounds more not, not anymore. Yes, I did it in the past. I don't do it anymore. Okay, next one. This one is a little bit more complex to understand for non-native speakers. But well, that's what what's that's what I'm here for. So well, future perfect simple. Subject will have past participle verb complement. They all look pretty similar, so you're like, what? They are all the same. No, they're not. Okay, so the third is subject I will have past participle verb and complement. Yes, I will have taught English for 11 years. Yes, usually when you, we use the future perfect simple, what we do is use conjunctions. Conjunctions such as by the time or when and some more. For example, right now at this moment I am 29 years old and I will have taught English for 30 years 
by the time I am really bad in math. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, so let's say in the I will have taught English for 30 years. Okay, I have taught English taught English for 11 years plus uh, 29 years. That is 30. Oh my god, what am I doing? I'm crazy. Okay, sorry, this is not a math class as I said. <laughs> one second. Okay. So 9 plus 1 equals 10, 2 plus 1, 3, and 4, 40. Okay, so by the time I turn 40, by the time I am 29 right now. So 29 plus 11 is 40. So um, I will have taught English for 30 years by the time I turn 40. By the time I become 40 years old or 40 years young. It depends on what I look like. Okay, so next one. He will have learned a lot. He will have learned a lot. Okay, so again, subject, he will have. Verb and past participle, a lot. Compliment. All right, so he will have learned a lot. So let's say that he, he subscribes to my channel and he starts learning. And um, let's say that in a year or two, he, fin he finishes watching all of my videos. Okay, so he will have learned a lot by the time, by the time, let's say we put it here, by the time he, he finishes this free course. Okay. He will have learned a lot by the time he finishes this course by then. All right, so that's when we use, that's how we use and when we use the future perfect simple. All right, so let's make it clear again. Present perfect simple, something you did in the past and you still do today. Past perfect simple, something you did and you don't do anymore. Just like the simple past, but I'll, I'll tell you the difference in another video. Okay, future perfect simple. Something you will have done by the time something else happens. As for example, when I turn 50, I think I will have made over a thousand videos. Yes, <laughs> I hope. Okay, so well, Thank you very much for watching. Remember to please subscribe to my channel so I can keep teaching you for free. Thanks for watching. Okay, so let's continue. Now I will show you how to create the negative and the interrogative sentences. Okay, so the first one, well, they are the exact same ones, but I want to show you how easy it is. The first one was, I taught English. I have taught English. But now, in question form, we use have first. So what we do is we swap. We exchange. We exchange have and the subject. That is so simple, right? Have you? Have you taught English for 11 years? Okay. Or another question here. We can also have a negative question. Hadn't he? Hadn't he learned a lot? Why does he seem to know nothing? Hadn't he learned a lot? A negative question. We use a negative question when we want to depict surprise. Yes. Hadn't he learned a lot? Hadn't you been learning for a long time? Haven't you been teaching? Yes. All right. So, and another question. Will he? Will he have learned a lot by the time he turns 50? Will he have done a lot by the time he turns 50? Yes, all right. So that is a question form. And the negative form is so easy. N apostrophe T. And as you may already know, this is called a contraction. So hasn't is a contraction for has not, has not. So that is why we call it a contraction, because we contract, we put two words together. So that is why we call it a contraction. Hasn't. Hasn't, apostrophe, T. All right, so hadn't. 
again here, to make them negative, to say no, haven't. Um, and, well, in this case, we say won't, won't, will not. Yes, so hasn't, hadn't, and won't. Yes, so it is better to use contraction sometimes, but if you are writing something formally, I do suggest you not to use contractions. All right, so thank you for watching and um, give it a thumbs up before you go. And I will leave you some homework in the next section of this video. Thank you. All right, so here is your homework. Um, I want you to please answer the following questions. Use full sentences. So where do you do your homework? In the comment section below this video. As the first question is, what have you done this week? For example, I have um, worked a lot this week and I have worked up very hard to create these videos. And um, second question, where have you lived? Where had you lived before you moved to where you live now? I had lived in Colorado before I moved to LA. All right, and the next one, what will you have done by the time you turn 80? By the time I turn 80, hopefully I will have made 5 million videos. <laughs> All right, so well, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and um, leave your homework in the comment section below this video. Thanks for watching, see you next time.